Gents, I'm here to tell you that life is going to kick you in the balls. And when you're down, it's going to come right back and kick you in the face. How do I know life is going to treat you like this? Because that's how it's treated me. 2009 is a year I'd rather forget. Had a whole year of just business failures, led to a bankruptcy, and at the end of it, I lost my little sister to suicide. And yeah, I'm not going to hide it. That was a rough stretch and continues to be a tough time for my family to think about. And let's talk about this year. In February, my wife lost her father wasn't able to go back to Ukraine because she's nine months pregnant. Right before the baby's due, all of a sudden a war breaks out in Ukraine. My mother-in-law, sister-in-law with her two sons, her family, all of a sudden we don't know where they're at. They went north of Kyiv, the actual wrong directions. The Russians basically overtake their area and all of a sudden they're in the war zone for two weeks and we're not hearing from them. They managed to escape. They had to travel over to Poland and we had a flight waiting for them and all of a sudden they had to leave everything. Now at this point, I will say I'm grateful. I've got my health. I have my family, most of them in from Ukraine. Brother-in-law had to stay over and fight, but I will say that this has been tough. And if you had to lay things out, I know a lot of people in my family are saying, this isn't fair. How did this happen? Why did this happen? Now, I don't have the answers to those questions, but I will say that this is an illustration of how life is not fair. Life is going to kick you when you are down. Life is going to be tough and you need to be prepared for that. And that's the brutal truth, gents, that you need to hear. Life isn't fair. Life is going to hit you hard when you least expect it. So, knowing that truth, you need to do what you can today to be prepared for it. A week ago today, I was in a mastermind with a buddy of mine. He's talking about his business, how it's doing well. Everything is great. Guess what? Two days later, his house burns down. You can be on top of the world, but you need to be prepared to be knocked down. And I know for me personally, I've got a whole checklist of things that I go through to make sure, am I prepared? Do I have emergency funds? And you get the technicality, but little things. Do you actually have a fire plan? Have you actually thought through all the things that can happen? Understanding that in life, bad things are going to happen to everybody helps you to be prepared for when they actually do. The next brutal truth, gents, is that 52% of men at some point in their lives are going to deal with erectile dysfunction. Seriously though, gents, that is pretty brutal if you think about it. And that allows me to bring in today's sponsor, Roman. Now, gents, I've talked about Roman for years because I love what these guys do. Roman connects you directly with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional for a free telehealth consultation from the privacy of your own home. The provider then finds a treatment plan that's right for you and prescribes effective medication if needed. To get started, gents, go to row.co slash RMRS. If approved, you'll get 20% off your first order of ED treatment plus free two-day shipping. Seriously, gents, if you're dealing with ED, ignoring the problem is not going to fix it. You need to take action and Roman makes it simple. Now, building off that earlier point that life isn't fair, I want to bring in a quote from Jean-Luc Picard. He said that sometimes you do everything right and you still lose. That's life. And that's true. Just happened to my daughter. She worked for four months training in ballet. She thought she had a part lined up. She was practicing for that part. Pretty much she thought she had it. She went in there and all of a sudden she was blindsided. She did not get the part. They gave it to someone that was much more junior than her and the director, he had his reasons, but it really just hit her heart. Now, I am happy because I'd actually talked to her about this and we went through and this is one way you can prepare for life being hard on you is simply go through the worst case scenario. I asked her what would happen if he gave that part to somebody else? How are you going to react? She said, you know what? I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to be sad, but I'm going to congratulate the other person that got that role because that person probably worked just as hard as me. And that's exactly what happened. Now, she was st still pretty sour, pretty sad about it, but she, you know, we work through these things over the time. But I think that this just reiterates, hey, life is going to hit you hard. But if you know it's coming and if you look at the worst case scenario, how are you going to react? You can actually role play. You can think through how you're going to react and it can help you to deal with that. Yes, you, you knew it could happen. And when it does, all right, this is what you do. The next brutal truth is that you should focus in on things you can control and nothing else. Now, you've probably heard of the serenity prayer and this one does a great job of summarizing this point. It goes like this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, it's that last part, which for me is key to know the difference between the things you can change and the things you can't because you are responsible for going after and working 
to change the things that you can, but you're not responsible for the things that you can't. But the hard part is figuring out which one is which. And I'll be straight, gents, for years I tried to figure this out. It's one of the reasons I studied philosophy in college. What it's come down to for me is that I know I can change myself. Everything out there, especially other people, I really don't have any control over them. I can't force other people to change. So, the simplification for me is I focus inward. I focus in on improving myself, improving the things in my direct control. I have a big impact on my family and I focus less on geopolitical politics and things like that, which are outside of my realm. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't become a politician or diplomat, but God help you if you do. I am saying though that you have direct control over yourself, what you put into your body, how you take care of your body, what you put into your mind, how you cultivate your mind. These are the things that you are responsible for making sure that you execute on, that you take action, that you do the best you can with what you've got. The next brutal truth, you and only you are responsible for your life. You can't blame it on your parents. You can't blame it on your spouse or your girlfriend or women in general. You can't blame it on all your friends who are leading you down the wrong path. The reality is you have made a number of choices that have led you down a certain path. And I know this is tough for so many guys to accept. I know for me, it's tough sometimes. Look at, I want to have more business success. I want to be in better shape. I want to have this. I want to have that. When you stop pointing blame and you accept full responsibility, and I know there are some things outside of your responsibility, but if you accept that full responsibility, guess what? You take back the power to actually make change. Because when you look at your body and say, you know what? It's not in the shape I want it to be. It is my fault that I'm eating what I'm eating, that I'm not maybe earning what I want to be earning. Because if it's your responsibility, then you have the ability to change your actions, change your habits, change your direction, your bearing, and start going in the direction that you want to go. Now, I know some of you guys are pretty laid back. You're like, Antonio, come on. I don't want to take charge of my life. Whatever comes my way, I'm just going to accept. Well, that's the next brutal truth, that if you don't take charge of your life, somebody else will. Maybe it's going to be society. Maybe it's going to be, you know, the neighbor you, neighborhood you live in. Maybe it's going to be your family. Whoever it is, it's not going to be you. It's going to be somebody else is going to be directing you, pushing you into a direction that you may not be happy. Now, I've got family and I have friends that they seem to be fine, kind of just going along with what their spouse tells them, with what their girlfriend tells them, with what the family tells them, and they just do that. And I think for a while, if you're, you know, looking for direction, and a lot of these people are well-meaning, but what you need to be careful of is when you wind up at the top of a wall that you didn't even mean to climb, you put all this work and effort into and you look back and that was 20 years of your life, 10 years of your life, two years of your life. And I always applaud a man that goes out there and says, you know what? I'm not going in the direction I want. And everyone else is saying, oh, you know, you're two years into this degree. If you just stuck around for two years longer, this is your time. This is your life. You don't know how much time you've got left. You need to live your life. So take charge of it because otherwise society, the world, it's going to point you in a direction you don't necessarily want to be going. The next brutal truth, gents, is that you are going to die. I'm going to die. We are all going to die. And I know when we say this, yeah, you get it. And you know it's a reality, but we choose to ignore death on a daily basis. And that's too bad because when you ignore death, you don't take advantage of all you, I mean, that feeling that comes when you realize that you've got limited time, that you need to be sucking the marrow out of life, that you need to be enjoying every moment. I mean, this is tough because day to day, you've got to be able to earn a living. You've got commitments. You've got things going on. But when you realize that this could be the last night with your spouse, how are you going to spend that time with her, with your girlfriend, with your daughter? with you know your mom on the phone, when you are angry with your father, all right, what's the last thing you're going to say to him? And I know that there are people out there with all these stories, the last thing they regret saying to someone that passed away. Don't let that be you. Think about how much time do you have left. I know for me, it's something I've got to catch myself because I get frustrated with my kids. I get frustrated with my wife, but I try to, hey, ask for forgiveness. I, you know, to me, that relationship is so important. I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to, you know, even though I think I'm right, I'm more, it's more important for me to let them know I love them. I tell all my friends that I'm really close with, that I love them. I quit holding it back because I realized you don't know when you're going to lose somebody. Do you want to be wasting your time working on that project? It allows you to cancel meetings when really there isn't a need for it because you realize I don't have enough time for this. I need to be spending time with the people that matter to me. So, if we know we're going to die, why don't we change? Why don't we become better? And the next brutal truth, gents, is that fear holds us 
back. And I'm caught in this situation. I, I look at many things in my life. I'm good. I'm, I'm doing pretty good, decent in a lot of things. And I don't want to shake it up. And I realize that it's the fear of losing what's good for the possibility of what's great is what in my, many of my situations is holding me back. I know for this channel, I kept doing the same type of videos again and again. And you probably have noticed if you've watched this channel, we've been changing up the videos and I really had to get myself out of that comfort zone because I realized that I was scared to change things up. I was scared of putting in more hours of changing up the way that we were making the videos, going with longer lengths, bringing in a consultant. I was the fear of losing that money versus keeping it and being able to pay myself, you know, pretty well. All of a sudden, you know, I'm having to give that up. But fear is what you've got to bust through if you want to really achieve greatness. And it's something that at any age, at any point we can face. It doesn't matter if you're a 45 year old man, if you are a 15 year old young man, you face fear, you know, going up and asking her out. But if you want to, you really have a shot with her. If you want to, you know, be able to throw it out there to shoot your shot, you've got to risk failure, rejection. And it's that fear that holds us back. One of my best friends that I really respect, his whole thing is to bust through and to go through the suck. He has almost become fearless in being able to deal with rejection, with failure, getting out there almost to a fault. But I will say that uh, that's one thing I respect about a lot of guys I know. And I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Is there something holding you back? What is a fear that's stopping you from taking something to the next level? Maybe it's going out looking for another job. Maybe it's the fear of why aren't you asking for a pay raise? Maybe it's the fear of, you know, are you are you with somebody and you're scared? You've been in this relationship for two years and you're scared to mess this up because it's good enough. Guys, I want to hear from you in the comments below. What is holding you back? What fear is stopping you from becoming great? The next brutal truth you need to hear is that there are people you need to keep at an arm's length. They are going to bring you down and you may love them. You may care about them. You may have a history with this person, but you've got to keep them out of your lives. Otherwise, they're going to ruin it. I like the way Seneca put this. Associate with people who are likely to improve you and welcome those who you are capable of improving. I really like this quote because he talks about not only surrounding yourself with people that are a benefit to you, but people also that you can be of a benefit too. And this applies to everyone, but it's the people that are taking away from the situation. And I get it that it's your cousin. It's perhaps your brother, but this person, when you're around them, it just brings everything down. And I'm talking that it really creates a negative net effect. It affects a relationship with people, other people that matter to you. And you've got to find a way to be able to compartmentalize this and keep it away. Otherwise, this toxic relationship can ruin your life. And I know for me personally, I like to think of myself as a loyal person. I stick around for people, but eventually when I see that it's hurting other people around me, that's when I have to make the call that, Hey, this person needs to be, yeah, I just can't respond to them when they're asking for way too much. The next brutal truth is that even warriors ask for help. I know that a lot of you guys look at yourself as the lone wolf. You are the guy that can do everything. And I'm all about individualism. I'm all about being self-sufficient, but there are going to be times when you need others and there's nothing wrong with calling in the cavalry, with getting help from your friends, especially when you're going through some tough times emotionally, maybe you've lost your job, you've gone through your savings, maybe you didn't have the savings and you embarrassingly have to reach out. I've been in a great position to be able to loan money to friends. And here's the thing, if you loan money to friends, don't expect to get it back. But I do view this as it, it can strengthen the relationship and it is something that there's no shame in asking for help. Now, if you find yourself continuously asking for help, it may be something that you want to reevaluate the way that you're running things, the way that you're earning, but uh, hey, you may be going through some health conditions. You just may have been hit by life in the wrong way and you weren't ready. There is nothing wrong with asking for help when you need it. Now, I know some of you guys out there may be thinking, I'm not going to ask for help. I mean, what are people going to think? Here's the reality. The next brutal truth is that nobody gives a shit about you. I mean, your mom and your parents do and your sister, you know, family does hopefully, but uh, the reality is everyone's worried about their own problems and who cares what other people think when you realize this. And it does take a little bit of time of maturity. You start to realize, Hey, I can live life how I want to live. Who cares what other people think about the car I buy, how old it is. I've had the same truck. I've got that thing repaired. It looks good. I had the same truck for like 25 years. It's amazing. And I don't, I don't care that, uh, yes, I pull up to the ballet studio where my daughter's right. Everyone's driving these 
brand new Mercedes, BMWs, all these nice vehicles. And I got my vintage truck and I don't care because here's the thing is I don't worry about payments. I've, I, I love the vehicle. It gets the job done. It's functional. I've known it. I know how it acts. It's not going to break down on me. Hopefully point being is when you live your own life. And that's the next brutal truth is that comparison is the death of happiness. So, when you stop comparing yourself to others, and this has again been tough because we've got friends that have huge houses and my house is relative, a small old farmhouse, 110 years old, got character, but it doesn't have everything I would like. It's got one shower for 11 people, which has been interesting. Lucky I've got my office I can kind of retreat to. But if you can get out of that comparisons, I know I talk about clothing, I talk about fancy watches, but guys, think about what really do you need to be happy? I know for me, what I want is a nice fireplace, big television, be able to watch all my Star Wars, Star Trek movies. I'm big in the science fiction, be able to have some popcorn, you know, that for me is like an awesome day to be able to have some lasagna that I can heat up. I like good food, which is mostly home food, nothing super fancy. I like being comfortable. I like it being cool outside with a warm fire. That sounds good, but that's my definition of happiness. You've got to find yours and stop comparing it to what other people want and have because you're going to eventually, and you can work hard, you could get that and you're fine. That's not going to make you happy. You've got to ask those questions. You've got to be able to live life on your terms. And that's the next brutal truth. The only true freedom you have is the ability to make up your own mind, to be able to choose your own path. Yes, you can watch my videos and I can direct you. You could even like meet up with me. I used to have a conference, men influential. I love talking with people, but here's the thing. Any advice you get from anyone online or anyone, any teacher, anyone out there that you maybe are looking up to, or maybe you look at as a peer, it's just going to be their thoughts, their view. You've got to make your own decisions for yourself. And this is tough because first, you know, couple dozen years of our life. We got our family influencing us. We have friends influencing us. And it's so easy to go with the crowd, especially when you don't necessarily know what to do. And there are so many decisions to make, but where you want to take your life, make sure that you make this decision, how you want to spend your life, who you want to spend it with. These are the decisions that you've got to make. Now, the bad part about you making all these choices is where you end up, you are 100% responsible. But as we talked about earlier, when you take on that responsibility, you have the power to actually change it and go in a different direction. But for me, it's about living a fulfilling life life, living a life that I can look back on and say, you know, Matt, no matter how many mistakes I made and where I ended up, it was my life. I lived it to the best of my ability and uh, yeah, I'm satisfied. This is, yeah, this has been a great journey. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash the like button. Seriously, when you engage with this video, it lets the Stoics of old know that, hey, Antonio is doing his part to bring their philosophy to light, but there's a lot of great guys out there talking about this stuff. And what I love about the information in this video is that it's been around for thousands of years. And guys, if you've got something to add to this video, if I missed something, let me know in the comments below, or if you disagree, I love hearing from you guys. Now, this next brutal truth is going to upset some people out there, but you cannot be offended by anything unless you give it permission. Now, we live in a cancel culture world that's taking offense to everything. A lot of people are asking, where does it end? And that's the problem is it doesn't end anywhere. You can always, depending on, you know, how a person sees something, they can be offended by it. But the reality is they're all seeing pretty much the same thing, just from different angles, different views. They are interpreting it different. And I can't do anything about somebody else's interpretation. So again, this is why it's so important to live your life, to know what you stand for, what are your core values, what are your ideals, and you need to figure that out. You need to know truly what you stand for. Is it honor? Is it courage? Is it commitment? What are your core values? Know what that is and then stand for it because there are going to be people, no matter what you choose, are not going to like you, are not going to like that. And that's another brutal truth is that there will be people out there that will hate you for who you are, for what you stand up for, especially if you're vocal about it, just simply existing. There are people that, you know, feel there are too many people on this planet and that we should get rid of some of them. And those people, I don't know who they're looking to get rid of, but understand that, yeah, there are people out there that don't like Americans, people that don't like people from India, people that don't like people from the UK, wherever you are in the world. I think everyone likes Australians though. We, they're just awesome. But, uh, you know, most of us just, somebody doesn't like you for some reason and there's nothing you can do about it. So, what to do with all this hate, all this frustration, all this negativity out there? There's only so much a guy could take. Well, guys, last thing I want to talk about here is love. And I do feel that this is one of those virtues. It's one of those things that most people deep down, I think, want. I know for me, I, 
I love being loved and I love being able to give love. And that's the key is that to be loved, you have to love. It's a reflection. And if you understand that when you give love, more comes back. And it's not about how people reciprocate love. It's not about whether or not they acknowledge your love. Love is good in of itself. It doesn't require an external reward. It doesn't require recognition. It doesn't require even for somebody to give it back to you. Giving it and feeling it and passing it, that right there is the reward in of itself. And a funny thing happens when you start to love those around you. You put what they need ahead of you, all of a sudden you realize that love starts to come back in ways you least expected. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about how to be seen without simping? Yeah, you don't need to be doing none of that simping shit. Guys, in this video, I have a lot of fun with it. So go check it out. It's a solid one. And uh, yeah, it's good. When you click here, it will magically take you to the next video. It's amazing how that happens.